Let's have a look at section 9.5, counting subsets of a set combinations. Now combinations is a concept that we first saw in chapter 5, and we revisit it here in chapter 9, which makes sense since chapter 9 has really been focused on a variety of different counting rules. So if we let n and r be non-negative integers with r less than or equal to n, an r combination of a set of n elements is a subset of r of the n elements. Uh, the notation, which we read as n choose r, describes the number of subsets of size r that can be chosen from a set of n elements. And there's some alternative notation given here. The formula, which we first saw in chapter 5, is n factorial over n minus r factorial. Okay, so a couple of notes I want to make about this before we move on to the other concept that's uh, highlighted in this section. Um, first of all, uh, here we can use this new rule now along with the other rules that we've seen in chapter 9. So you're going to see this in the exercises used along with the multiplication rule or along with the addition rule. And so now that we have all kinds of tools that we learned in chapter 9, we can look at some pretty interesting examples. Um, and I think you'll, when you look at the exercises for section 9.5, you'll see that um, they're they can be quite interesting examples um, and, you know, um, seeing the, the various ways that these rules work together. A um, couple other things I want to note here. One is that, remember with combinations, the order does not matter. We're just talking about subsets of a certain size. Whereas with permutations, the order does matter. Um, and that's what distinguishes those two concepts. Their formulas look pretty similar. Um, so if you're ever in doubt, just think about whether the order matters or not. Um, the other thing I want to note here is, as I mentioned in a previous video when we were looking at permutations, uh, any scientific calculator is going to have some kind of function key that will handle combinations. And nearby, you'll have something that does permutations. And nearby, you'll have something that does factorials. Those three things tend to be grouped together. They might be in a menu somewhere or a shift of another button. Um, but that can be useful to have in mind, especially when some of the numbers are, are more difficult to work with um, if you didn't have the aid of a calculator. Um, so keep that in mind, and I encourage you if, you, if you're not already sure where that's located on your calculator, to, uh, to take a moment to kind of look into that. Okay, uh, something new that's presented to us in this section is permutations with sets of indistinguishable objects. And so let me explain what that's referring to, and then we'll get to the formula. So if you took a word, let's say, that has some letters that are repeated, and you were to scramble those letters, okay, well, that would be a little bit different than sc scrambling the letters of a word where all the letters are, this, are different. Okay, so if you have some letters that are repeated, that's going to be different than if all the letters are distinct from each other. And so, for example, if the, if the word has two T's in it, and you just swap those two T's around, well, you haven't really changed anything in terms of how that word looks, right? So what we want to do is be able to come up with a way of counting the different arrangements of those letters, but keeping in mind that some of the letters are the same, so scrambling those among each other 
does not change anything and should not be counted as a separate order, a separate permutation. So here's the formula. So if you have n objects to start with, and let's say n sub 1 are of the first type, and n sub 2 are of the second type, and n sub k are of the kth type, and n is the sum of all those n sub 1 through n sub k, then the number of distinguishable permutations of the n objects is n factorial over n sub 1 factorial times n sub 2 factorial all the way to n sub k factorial. Okay, now if these, if these objects were all distinct, then the formula would just be n factorial. So you're dividing by these factors that are accounting for the fact that if you only rearrange the letters that match, you're not changing the permutation. Um, and so here's an example. If you took the word Mississippi, that word has one M, it has four I's, it has four S's, and it has two P's. There are 11 letters total. So the number of ways you could rearrange that, the number of distinguishable permutations, would be 11 factorial, over 4 factorial times 4 factorial times 2 factorial. We don't need to include the 1 factorial for the M. If you did, it wouldn't hurt anything. Um, but really, you only have to focus on the, the things that are, in fact, repeated. The 1 factorial is just 1. Um, and so that turns out to be 34,650 distinguishable permutations. So you'll see a few exercises like that um, at the end of section 9.5. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, this is the last section in this course, um, and I hope you found these videos in general helpful. Um, and uh, good luck if you, if you decide to study this subject further. There's certainly Plenty of more content from this book that we haven't covered, but that concludes the content for this course.